Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's having a good day. If this is your first time stopping in, please subscribe to the uh, channel, like the video, comment, all that kind of good stuff. So as you can see, we got our transmission back. So when I left the track yesterday, I didn't go home. I shot up 95, went to Muldoon's, picked up our 48 RE, or I guess now it's really a 47 RE. It's a 47 RE case, and I'll explain the difference here in a moment but got all our old parts that we changed out for some upgraded stuff or wore out stuff. Um, our torque converter, our torque converter from DPC. Um, this is a quad disc torque converter. Ours was a uh, fricasseed. If you had seen my Instagram post or my video on it, uh, yeah, I, I cook that thing good. So uh, got that all back. Here's our old case, which honestly, when John called me and said that he had, you know, we had bad news about the case, it really didn't surprise me too much. This thing's kind of been wallowed out. It's had a, a rough life, if you will. So the reason this case is junk is John had the entire transmission together, and this bolt hole here, when he was torquing the pump down, it wouldn't get tight. So when he pulled the pump out here, it had actually broke these two pieces off of the case. As you can see and what he said was it was actually already heli coiled so the heli coil spun in there and then broke that part of the case off i don't know how well you'll be able to see it but they tried to drill it deeper and now it's coming out the back side of the case so really this case is junk um yeah i don't you know you wouldn't want to weld that up it's not worth it but if you look at the mounting pole the mounting holes for the the pan one helicoil two helicoil three helicoil four helicoil um five helicoil six helicoil seven eight helicoil eight helicoil nine helicoil that one's not helicoiled that one looks to be helicoiled that one's not helicoiled that one's heli so all right so two of the Two, maybe three of the bolt holes on the pan are still good. Um, so, yeah, this thing's been through some shit, and it doesn't bother me getting rid of it. The thing's kind of got some bad mojo or something going on, so we're starting off with a new case. And this is a 47 uh, front half case. So as you can see here, it's nice and smooth right there. This is really the big difference. And on this 48 case, we have these two embossments, like I had said before, for a TTVA motor. Um, so in the, these were in the later 5.9 trucks. So that little uh, throttle, what is it? TTVA, it's like a, it's a throttle valve actuator is what it is. And all that does, see we have this uh, nice all thread setup holding ours back. But as you put your throttle down, it, it, it'll move that uh ttva thing i don't even know what the right name is for it but it'll move it back and forth so so if at you're at light throttle you're not getting real hard shifts and if you're at you know wide open throttle you're getting you know the full mommy you're getting nice hard firm shifts um our setup's just going to be we're going to set it to what the pressures john told me and we're going to go from there uh the older style the 47 re trucks they had a cable that would run to your accelerator pedal, I believe. I can't say I've ever worked on one, but that's a, a mechanical operation as opposed to this electronic operation. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this case. Um, maybe we can find a use for it, do something with it. Um, there's a lot of history with it. I mean, it's a certainly quite the talking point. Uh, yeah, I'm actually glad to get rid of it. All right, so what upgrades did we get done while we had the transmission apart? Already had all billet shafts and all that. Um, I had a fire pump valve body. Had John, um, I'd asked him to look at the valve body and, uh, you know, rework it to however he saw fit for our application. So he did some valve body work. He said there was, a, there was something in there that was kind of binding up. So he honed that out and got that moving freely and all that. But in the back here, there's a sprag, they call it. Ours had actually 
moved in the case so we had upgraded the last time this was a part to a bolt-in style sprag and i believe that's these holes here so when john swapped the cases over he swapped our bolt-in sprag over as it is much stronger another thing we did is this is a vent hole so rather he said that fluid under high rpm conditions can actually work its way out of this like labyrinth so they plugged that and now we have a vent back here and we will actually tie that in with our transfer case vent and we'll run that right up to the top of the case so we don't get any moisture or anything like that in there so um this is part of the planetary gears uh there's a little lip or ridge you guys aren't gonna be able to see it but as i run my finger across here you can feel that it's kind of not undercut but there's an overhang here that see i can grab it with my nail a little bit but John didn't want to reuse that, and understandably so, so he got us a new one of these. But as far as these planetaries go, um, he, the, ours are now all welded solid. And if I remember correctly, the thrust washers are actually on the back here. So now they are machined down for roller bearings. So that's another thing. Uh, John said that when you're working with like a thousand horsepower like we are, they will see premature wear of those thrust washers so the bearings are a good upgrade and i've heard uh you know it might free up a couple ponies you know less drag on everything but so that's an upgrade we did so a couple other little things that we did i had john uh i had asked him to check it out just to be safe but this is for our second gear apply for our band he said that this style can actually bend and break so we you know he upgraded to a billet piece for that this is the apply lever for second gear and this is as you can see it's a 5.0 so we went with i think it's like a 4.2 um, which he said is is better you know the 5.0s tend to cause bind up these servos we went with a different setup see this one's sleeved down to i guess if the bore gets messed up they put this in there but as you can see i can't even hardly get it off he says these are known to bind up so how John kind of put it to me is with the 5.0 lever and with like that servo and all, we had like an optimal case for to have bind up, you know, when we're shifting our gears, I guess it would be from two to three. Um, so that's all straightened out with, you know, the stuff they use and all that. And our torque converter, the stall speed has been raised. So that way we can build boost and hopefully not make near the amount of heat. So I'm going to get this stuff in the garage. I'm going to get changed, go sit in the woods for a little bit, and then we'll start to, you know, install this thing. All right, so... Went out hunting and uh, yeah, no luck. Uh, I didn't see a damn thing. The last couple weeks have been pretty shitty in the woods, honestly. I saw one big six point earlier this week, but other than that, just a couple little buck here and there, a couple little doe, not much activity. It really sucks. Um, but I did have some turkeys roosting in the trees the other night. Uh, first time I've seen that here at the house. So that was definitely interesting. So we don't have any fluid for our transmission. Um, I was always kind of taught that you need to put the torque converter in with a quarter or two of fluid in it. So we're not going to be able to start that process tonight. I'll have to run out and get some fluid tomorrow or the following day. Still haven't decided if I uh, want to go down to New Jersey for that sled pools for the uh, King of the Street event. But we still can get some stuff done here in the garage, um, primarily mounting our transmission aux cooler. This is going to go on the truck in addition to the one we previously had. I'm going to leave this one thermostatically operated, and then we'll have a, a provision for a switch to just have it run all the time, like when we're on the track and whatnot. And this one I'm just going to put on a switch. I'm hoping with the size of it that just when we're driving the truck, this one will kick on every once in a while, but that'll be about it. So this will probably only run like when we're racing or we're gonna have it on the dyno or something like that. At least that's the intention. 
if it seems like that's going to be an issue we'll add a thermostat down the road so as you can see i made this custom aluminum bracket for it uh, just two pieces of aluminum channel uh, to two pieces of flat bar so we can mount it up above the drive shaft so we're going to mount it on the bed right here um, right above the drive shaft i think that's a good spot i really don't want to go all the way back there because then we got to run lines from there but I made the bracket up so it should fit with the fan right in the center here of the bed. And then we'll center it up side to side just so it's, you know, in the middle in case we need to do something else in the future. But that's the plan right now. And, and how we're going to mount it is we got these nut zerts. Um, th they're thread inserts that press into the hole. We have a drill bit here. This is a 17 30 second drill bit for these 5 16 uh, thread inserts. Basically, we'll drill a hole, pop these in on our tool here, and then you just squeeze it, crimp it, and we should have good threads to mount our cooler to. I still have to drill the holes in the bracketry, but as you saw, the cross members are actually different sizes. So this side's two inches and this side's three inches. So we'll just put a hole in the center of each of these, hold it up there, we'll mark one hole, drill that, you know, and then proceed on from there. So that's our game plan for the night. I wanna just get this mounted and it'll just be a lot easier to do it without that drive shaft in a way. And we'll probably hold off on doing the drive shaft until after we get all our core lines ran because I don't have any material for that actually now that I think of it. Man, I just... So much shit, I just can't can't keep track of it all. Anyway, that's our uh, kind of goal for right now, and we'll go from there. The uh, trans coolers mounted finally. I uh, drilled one hole, put it up, you know, drilled another, and then I was able to drill the other two holes. The one hole back there is a little off, so it took me a little finagling to get it. But we got her in there. Um, looking good. I mean, it's nice and sturdy. Those 5 16 nut zerks, only one of them I could do completely by hand. The rest of them, the one first one I did with the uh, C clamp, and the other two I used a C clamp to help me, and then I could get it by hand. But yeah. If I would have gone with like quarter inch or something, maybe it would have been a little bit easier. I don't know, but yeah, they were uh, they're tough little buggers. All right, guys. So, like I said, the aux cooler is all mounted and good. So I've actually spent probably like the last hour or so looking over stuff and kind of getting stuff ready to put the transmission in. And we're actually, it's kind of just dumb luck that we don't have any fluid and we can't put the transmission in because you know what it's going to be a lot easier to do some work under there while it's out so what i mean is we got to run wires for our new aux cooler you know we got to figure out how we're going to run our lines all that which i was looking at and i kind of think i want to change where the other aux cooler is sitting um if you guys remember the aux cooler was, you know sitting here on this cross member like that so for this new cooler we'd have to come in with fluid and we still have fluid in there it's another thing we got to clean our coolers but the fluid would come in here and then we'd have to kind of make a, a u-turn and go up to our other cooler and then back to the transmission so i think i'm going to mount this sideways and i might try and figure out a way to affix it to the frame so we're not having to you know drop this whole thing Anytime we got to pull the transmission for whatever reason, we could probably just leave it up there and just be a little bit less of a hassle, you know, with the wires and all that kind of stuff. So 
I was looking at that and man, that transmission fluid, it don't look right, does it? Yeah, and it still smells burnt as you would expect. But uh, anyhow, we got to clean our coolers, run our lines, electricity, bunch of stuff that I completely overlooked. I was so excited about having the transmission back and getting the truck ready to go. But we're gonna, maybe we can get some of that done tomorrow. The lines aren't that big a deal, but the you know the electrical and trying to get that thing mounted right. I think we're gonna we're gonna look at that first before we even get to doing this guy. Needless to say, that's gonna be the end of the night in the garage. Got the transmission back. We got our new big ass aux cooler mounted. Um, but tomorrow we'll look at you know running the electrical and how we're gonna plumb all that and how we're gonna mount this cooler. So. Maybe we'll have the transmission started to go in tomorrow. I don't know. But hopefully by the end of the weekend, it's at least mounted in the truck. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. And uh, you guys need to get out in your garage, get the wrench on your race truck. Or regular truck. Whatever kind of truck. Or car. Just get to working on something.